getting through a flare up becomes easier when you're tuning into what your body needs and providing it to the best of your ability my name is anindita and i am a functional medicine certified health coach and a practitioner and i help women with autoimmune conditions discover their own power to change with their bodies as their guide most people simply push through one flare up after another without being able to take any steps to take charge of their healing they are simply not aware that they can actually play an active role in their own healing process even when there are no clear answers and that's what i'm talking about today as to what you can do instead of just pushing through a flare up even when you don't have real answers as to what's going on and why right that there's a there's a reason uh, that these symptoms are reoccurring and you are having these flare ups and what you can do instead of simply just bearing with them and taking pain medications and medicating yourself because here is what most people do they continue to exercise every single day without break even when every muscle in their body is in pain so as a result they face worsening uh, muscular pain they face in increased inflammation delayed recovery risk of injury exhaustion all these kind of things that you simply want to avoid and also uh, you know the other thing that people often do is compare themselves to others online who seem to be coping well right it looks like you know other people are fine and this leads to them feeling envious depleted and isolated the other thing mistake the people make is letting negative thoughts spiral like my body is defective i will never get better it makes them feel helpless and hopeless at the same time and does not leave much motivation for them to make healthier choices this is something that is extremely common this feeling of helplessness another mistake that people make is not tracking their symptoms and potential triggers and so their symptoms continue to worsen over time in spite of taking medications to deal with them like this is also something that is extremely common and so they are they continue to uh, spiral they continue their you know their flare ups continue even as they try and take medications to deal with it uh the uh, another mistake that i would like to point out is that people tend to judge themselves and resent their bodies for having these limitations and they because you know this makes them feel like a failure right it fills them with shame and frustration because they're not able to get better and get on track so as you can see by now this is not a state that you want to be in if you want to get better and there is a way out of this right and what i want you to learn from this particular session from this video is that people tend to make this mistakes because uh, flare ups can be lonely and embarrassing right you don't want to share what's really going on with others uh, you don't want to admit that things are much worse than they seem and maybe you have tried to at you know try to share it with somebody but that person was not really very receptive because it's important to also share with people who are able to understand what you're going through because you're looking for some support not sympathy not pity right so flare ups can be lonely and embarrassing also women tend to be really hard on themselves because illness can feel like a personal failure and this is something that i can relate to because about a year ago i started having these back pain and sciatic nerve pain and being a health coach you know i thought that i would sort of get it under control just by pushing through you know the sometimes you forget your own um, lessons that you teach others and to cut a long story short i was traveling intensely at that time in you know and uh, you know i was constantly away from my hometown so i sort of kept pushing it off and it became worse and worse and worse and i of course uh, tried uh, you know i met couple of doctors but i did not really reach out to other supportive uh, you know members of my community who could have actually helped me right and i can't believe it right now but that's what i did i did not reach out to them i did not ask for support because i honestly felt that it was kind of like a personal failure uh, on my part because i am a health coach and i should know better but that's not really the case we are all human beings we our bodies are not machines they tend to wear and tear and some things do go wrong so it's important to understand uh, that you know when we should be asking for help and not take it as a personal failure right so so it took me a long time to recover and many feel the pressure also to keep going on no matter what so in my coaching program one of the models that i use uh, for my clients is called the care model and uh, you know so this uh, this model is has been developed over years of working with 
people with chronic health conditions especially with women who tend to put themselves last who tend to put their own self care last you know they typically i tell them that you know you what you end, end up doing is putting yourself at the last of your to do list at the bottom of your to do list right even your pet taking care of your pet would come higher up right that's what women tend to do as caregivers as uh, nurturers we want to take good care of our families our children of course and that's that's amazing but we tend to overgive and so we become depleted and burnt out and um, you know and over time this can lead to health issues and at the same time if you're already dealing with health issues this can just make it worse so this model i have developed over years of working with women uh, like you and um, it it helps to put in place some of the boundaries that you need it helps to put in place uh, you know uh, sort of uh, the theme of self compassion where you show kindness to yourself for uh, the pain that you are going through for your own suffering right this is not self indulgence this is not being selfish this is just a very very um, natural way of taking care of, of ourselves that we need to sometimes learn like or relearn so c stands for create a self care plan right i take my client and we brainstorm ways to uh, put down a self care plan and it is emotional self care it is physical self care it is spiritual self care right so there are different social self care so different kinds of categories of self care um, is what we put in place because often we uh, may be lacking in one area or another because self care is not a necess- is not a luxury it is a necessity and it's not just a trip to the spa or a massage or you know or some in you know something indulgent like that right it feels indulgent but it's very very big part of our uh, taking care of our body right so c is create a self care plan a is access in our guidance that we uh, you know we need to do in terms of our emotions our emotions are these kind of inner guidance system they tell us that you know something is wrong and we store a lot of emotions in our own body so by moving our body uh, by journaling by reflection by breathing by creating moments of stillness we are able to you know access this inner guidance which can tell us whether we are on the right track whether we need to make any changes what's really going on what you know what uh, what direction we need to move towards right uh, what is the meaning and purpose so there's so many things that come up when we are able to access this amazing amazing guidance system that we already have inside and it is interspersed with our body because our body is always in the present moment so that's when we when we access our emotions in our body you know we store our emotions in our body we are able to figure out what we need to uh, how we need to take care of our bodies as well and um r is replenish your reserves so replenish your reserves again is restorative practices and in fact in my uh, facebook group embrace your healing journey podcast it's called embrace your healing journey podcast i today i did a session on rest the seven types of rest right we don't really know that physical rest is just one of the seven different types of rest that we really need in our lives right to feel vibrant to feel full of energy uh you know we have we need uh, all kinds of rest social rest creative rest um you know physical rest of course spiritual rest right so all kinds of the seven different kinds of rest that we all need and scheduling these activities or you know uh, active rest activities are really important to replenish ourselves emotionally spiritually and physically so that's that's a part of the care model as well e stands for embrace the struggle with uh, stress with softness right so understanding that stress is a part of our life and often we are not able to take out the stress completely right we are not able to eliminate it completely that's not really practical but what we can do is change our response to stress right change the way we think about stress uh may we deal with these small stresses in the day like from the beginning when you wake up in the morning and you are reading the newspaper and there is a devastating news or a crisis you know you don't really realize how much it affects your emotional health right so finding ways to deal with these kind of micro stressors is also part of it so embracing your stress in your life and of course reducing it wherever possible which is not always possible of course but with softness with ease can really make a lot of difference so this model 
allows my clients to use the tools of um, self-compassion and body awareness. I, typic I have these two underlying themes in my own coaching program, Healing From Within. And this, uh, these themes of self-compassion and body awareness helps to guide and show them the way even when there are no clear answers. So, for example, if you are, uh, you know, if you're not very really clear as with your diagnosis or why you're getting these flare-ups and what is really the solution, you can allow your emotions to guide you. You can allow your emotions to guide you in making the right choices for your diet and for your lifestyle, right? And this is exactly what my client, one of my clients did. And she had, when she came to me, she had all these kind of, uh, different varied health uh, issues she was going through a very very bad flare-up of her eczema and she was not able to go to work she was not able to uh, you know really um, go to work or take a bath so she was really struggling with all of this and when she sort of started um, she when she was able to actually use and incorporate the model in you know implement a self-care practice show compassion for herself that's when things started shifting it's not about functional medicine the you know the modality that i practice is not about just taking supplements and doing tests it's all of also about understanding what your unique body needs from you at this moment and then giving it what it needs right so that's that's what i wanted to share with you today i hope that you will keep some of the things in mind especially the mistakes that people often make so that you can get started with uh, creating a healing environment where you can of course deal with your flare-ups in a much uh, better manner uh, I have opened up uh, 10 slots for a free discovery call so if you want to get to know a bit more about the care model about the frame uh, about this model and the framework that I use I have a two other models that I use in my coaching program as well to cover other aspects of the healing program uh, just you can uh, go to aninditarungta.com forward slash call or head to the link in bio and schedule a call today.